In today's fast-paced society, we need energy for almost everything that happens in our daily lives. We need energy to make things. We need energy to live. The whole world needs energy in order to operate. But what is energy exactly? This is a question that has puzzled people for hundreds of years. Over centuries, thinkers and scientists have been looking for an essence that remains unchanged in the universe no matter what interaction takes place. And they then call that energy. And one of the easier ways to think of it is, if we th is to think of energy in terms of matter. Um, that if matter is the substance that's, that makes up the universe, energy is the thing that causes that substance to move or, or more probably more accurately to accelerate, to change its, its state or change its motion or change in some way. It is a difficult concept, uh, concept in the sense that uh, you see energy is abstract. It's not like matter, the one that you can see. The outcomes Melusi is aiming at for his learners in today's lesson are to draw a concept map relating to energy, to improve their understanding of the concept of energy, to test a range of appliances for the energy they consume using appropriate equipment, to draw conclusions about energy efficiency and running costs of various appliances. The lesson thus includes two teaching strategies helping learners to develop concept maps and helping learners experiment by testing items for energy consumption. The teacher first guides the learners in developing concept maps concerning energy. So I want you to think more about this concept energy and write everything that is linked to it. Do you understand that? I just gave them a start that you see you can maybe look at the uses, you can look at what at, uh, at the types and all the like. So they added some more ideas on their concept map. The learners work on their maps in groups of five. They explore different aspects of energy, the different types of energy, its different uses, the dangers, the definitions, the conservation of energy and so on. After the learners have completed their work, a representative from each group presents their map to the class. Firstly, I will, I will state the law of conservation, which says energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can change from one form to another. There's no real right answer to a concept map. What you're really looking at is the sort of pattern that that person has formed in their brain of how these different concepts link and you can use that to diagnose where they're going wrong, where their thinking is non-scientific. Now that the class has discussed energy in broad terms, the teacher can focus on a specific aspect of energy, electrical energy. The learners are working with kits that are made by ESCOM. By questioning them, the teacher encourages them to use their prior knowledge. Which one have you ever seen? We have, we have seen before. I've seen the Amitai in our Where is the Amitai? This is the ammeter. That is the ammeter. Good. Do you know what does the ammeter measures? It measures current. Which other instrument or meter we have seen before? A meter post. More correctly, it is called an electric meter. We also found it in our houses. Good. What does it measure? It measures current. Energy. Good. What type of energy? Not just any energy, but what type of energy? It's much an electrical energy. The meter here in our school is counting the amount of energy, electrical energy, that is converted into this light. During the month end, or at month end, the bill will come and says, we must pay so much money. The teacher reminds the learners of the key concepts of force, work and power before starting the activity. Force, work, energy and power. So, in which units do we measure work? In joules. In More correctly, the unit for work or energy is joule. Which other physical quantity in electricity is also measured in joules? Energy. Energy, the one that we are going to investigate. How, how do we define energy? How do we define energy? Gongo. This is the ability to do work. Good. It is what makes the light bulb to light up. 
It is what makes the motor car to move. OK. Energy makes matter to move. It is very good. In the first activity with the kit, the learners measure how much energy a 100-watt light bulb uses over a five-minute period. The learners first have to take an initial reading of their electric meters. The teacher helps them to get a correct reading. If a, if a kid reads from an angle, not straight, so you take it that maybe the reading is, is correct but slightly, so that is the error of parallax. Make sure that only one appliance is, is put, not everything. Only the, the 100 watt traditional light bulb must be put on. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Then the learners simultaneously switch on the light and start the stopwatch. In this lesson, the teacher is introducing the concept of energy efficiency through some practical work. This gives learners a concrete and intuitive understanding of how electrical energy is utilized and which appliances and bulbs cost more than others. At the end of five minutes, the learners switch the light off and take a reading from the electric meter and record it. The reading we are taking for after this five minutes, it will be the reading, which will be the start reading for the compact fluorescent light. Okay. The learners now repeat the process with the fluorescent light in their kits, switching it on for exactly five minutes. If you noticed, the, the rate at which the wheel of the meter, the rate at which it was turning when you, you were measuring the electrical energy which was consumed by the traditional light bulb, look at the rate at, at which now the wheel is turning. Compare it with the rate at which it was turning before. But, Again, the learners take their readings at the end of the process. In the final measurement activity, each group has brought a different household appliance from home, a television, a fan, a microwave, a blender and a hairdryer. They now measure how much energy each appliance uses in five minutes. You now have readings for how many items? three items. You are now short of the readings for the other four. A representative of each group collects the readings from the other groups. Now you have the readings for five minutes. Angeti? Now, if in five minutes the appliance consumed that much, how much will it consume in, in an hour? Okay. In their groups, the learners multiply the amount of energy consumed by each item in five minutes by 12 to obtain the total amount consumed in an hour. Together with the teacher, they then compile a table, ranking the appliances in order of how much energy they consume in an hour. Which is the, is the fourth biggest? One traditional light bulb. One traditional light bulb. The fifth one? The fan uses 0 0.084 units per hour. I want you to calculate how much will you pay in using each one of those in an hour if ESCOM sells electricity at 30 cents a unit. The unit is a kilo, if one kilowatt hour costs 30 cents. After the learners have completed the calculations, the teacher emphasizes some of the practical points that emerge from the figures. This is the CFL, compact fluorescent light, and the normal light bulb we use in our homes. It does the very same work that the traditional light bulb uh, uh, does, okay? But if you can pay lesser, that, that means you are using electrical energy efficiently. You get the benefits at a lower cost. Those are the appliances they use on their daily lives. And you see, by, by the end of, of the month, parents need to pay for the electricity that has been used. So just to give a sense to learners that, you see, this appliance 
uses more energy, electrical energy, than the other one. So they will then, then decide, thinking for their parents, so that they can save some money at home. You need to actually have something concrete in order to, in order to sort of nail energy down. Um, so the use of apparatus, especially something like, a, like learning how to, to measure the amount of energy consumed by an electricity meter that's a simple or common electricity meter that's in the house, that sort of thing actually gives a lot more um, of a concrete idea of what energy is in terms of cost, in terms of use, in terms of brightness of bulbs and things that people can actually see and interact with. Hello, we have Mike from uh, the School of Physics at WITS and then we have Andrew from Protec, a well-known NGO. We are going to reflect on the video that we have observed. We have seen the teacher using the brainstorming uh, strategy of trying to get ideas from learners using a concept map. How do you think that is a useful technique? Its use is that it enables learners to express their ideas freely and it indicates to teachers um, how the learners think that the various concepts are interrelated. And, and, and this will tell the teacher what their current state of learning is. In other words, what do they already know about, in this case, energy. And, and, and then that is a useful springboard for the teacher to then know how to proceed. Um, does he or she have to get rid of a lot of alternative conceptions or are the learners ready for the, for the next stage of learning? You brought in a very important point that it also helps in linking the, 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 the concepts and yes. therefore the teacher will be able to pick up which concepts are not linked correctly mm. so that mm. he can start his teaching yes. from there. So it captures a very important philosophy in teaching that we, we don't go out there you know, to, to, uh, to teach informed by theories and that, but that our teaching is also influenced by where learners are. In other words, it's, it's, it's learner-centered teaching, teaching that takes cognizance of where learners are. So, I mean, in, in, those, in, with, in that uh, respect, it's a very powerful tool. And uh, what can I say, but that it was also used very effectively in this particular lesson uh, as a diagnostic tool. I mean, uh, the one comment that came across also was that there's no right answer. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. teachers need to be aware yes. of that. Mm -hmm. Because important. in my experience, where uh, mm -hmm. I've certainly seen my uh, con concept maps used uh, uh, badly, was where the teacher was looking for a particular mm -hmm. answer mm -hmm. and wanted to stereotype the children into a certain mold. You lose the dynamic there. Mm -hmm of designing material and activities that would help the learners to go through a process of conceptual change, i.e. to give up the alternative conceptions, to uh, uh, accept the, the scientific concept and, mm -hmm. and take ownership of it. So learners can only do that if they've been allowed to express where they mm -hmm. are. What I also find useful in, in his concept map is that when learners are given a chance to work in groups, they came out with mm -hmm. some broad uh, uh, concepts yeah. and he can actually be in a position to make to take those broad concepts and actually divide them. For yes. instance, yes. you can look at all those concepts and then come out with the the, the meaning of, of, of energy and the uses of energy, yeah. etc. etc. Yeah. And those can form part of his daily lesson just from the, the concept yes. map. Absolutely. And how yeah. do you yeah. think Absolutely. about the participation of learners in groups? Learners were, were divided into groups and they were given a chance to work on these concept maps. Of course, the, the important thing in, in group work is that to, the, the teacher must ensure that all um, learners are participating properly and that you don't have some learners just being uh, acting as spectators. I didn't see any evidence of that in the video. I think all the learners were very keen. And then what was very nice was that the, the teacher encouraged the learners uh, or a spokesman for each group to come up to the uh, to the blackboard mm -hmm. and to discuss their um, their their, um, their concept map and um, as as um, Andrew has just emphasised there is no such thing as a correct concept map mm -hmm. so that if if there were let's say eight groups there would have been eight different mm -hmm. concept maps and then that in itself would then constitute another dynamic mm -hmm. um, which, the, which the teacher can then um, move uh, forward from. So for instance, one could make a comparison mm -hmm. between 
two particular concept maps and say uh, group A and group B and actually have a class discussion on w the whys and wherefores of why mm -hmm. A and B have done things in a different way and even though neither of them is, is wrong. They each mm. entitled to have expressed their ideas in their own individual way. Just to say that uh, the, the group work can actually be extended as well in terms of activities. Once the groups have come up with different concept maps, you know, the teacher is now in a position to structure activities for each group, mm. Mm. you know, mm. uh, that uh, and each activity can be made to resonate with the nature of the concept map that came out from a group. What was also good about the, at the end of, of, of that uh, group work, the teacher actually summarized some yes. of the of, yeah. of, of the, the work from the from the from the learners. Mm. And then from there he got into the next stage mm. where he introduced the everyday appliances mm. that were brought into the classroom. Mm. Mm. How did you feel uh, and about the, the appliances that were brought into the classroom? I think it's excellent, again, uh, you know, taking science away from the abstract and making it real, you know. Uh, you had different things there, you had uh, uh, your fans, you had uh, different appliances that learners know about, and just taking those and uh, almost in a sense concretizing an abstract concept is very, very important. So the, and, and also the whole idea of learners engaging, you know, learners are not to be spectators to observe mm. the teacher do some kind of a performance. Uh, learning is active and learners are involved in constructing knowledge. And I think that was wonderfully captured uh, by having learners do different activities, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and actually uh, plot down and make readings on amateurs. And then also what I liked about the teacher actually engaging Mm -hmm. you know the learners in question and answers while they were uh, involved mm -hmm. in the uh, in the activities and using the appliances also for me mm -hmm. very uh, very interesting yes. and, and very mm -hmm. powerful yeah. what I also observed which was very good in this lesson was the integration of learning areas yes. we mm -hmm. saw a teacher bringing in the whole idea of learners calculating how much uh, I mean, how Absolutely. much energy has been used at home well well I thought that the the activity was uh, a very very well chosen yeah. um, because it in fact integrates a number of different aspects it it, 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 it exemplifies the fact that um, we have to pay for energy we don't get <laughs> energy from nothing uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and, and uh, I think the the notion of calculating electrical costs is, is, mm -hmm. is very topical um, with, with um, you know, the debate about whether ESCOM should increase um, mm -hmm. electricity charges at the moment. I think it mm -hmm. was very, very topical. Mm -hmm. And then I think also learning exactly um, which appliances uh, were uh, cost effective, if I can use mm -hmm. that term, mm -hmm. and, and which are rather heavy on, on electricity, I think mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. So I think that th it's important for them to realize that that cooking is an, act, is an activity which is, in, in a sense, very costly mm. energy-wise. Yes. And, uh, and I think it's something people need to know about. Mm. Yeah. So they'll know that if they yeah. want uh, one cup of tea, then they, not, they not need to fill up the kettle because it uses a lot of yes. energy than the boiling energy. one cup yes. of tea. But just looking at uh, uh, the comparison between the, 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 uh, the, the, the normal the bulb mm -hmm. and the, the, the uh, fluorescent light bulb, Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that was excellent, you know, to say here's a new way of, of another way of doing it and it's more cost effective. But I think a very good connection, which obviously the teacher could go on to make, mm -hmm. is between the cost effectiveness of the appliance and uh, its user friendliness in terms of the environment, you know, and pollution. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we do get our electricity ultimately at the end of yes. the day yeah. from coal, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and the more coal we burn, the more pollution we put into mm -hmm. the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that could be beautifully worked into mm -hmm. the whole thing mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We also saw the use of the chalkboard because in, in, in our case now the chalkboard yeah. is sort of a very, I mean, when people talk about chalkboard it, it has some negative uh, connotation. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you find the teacher using the chalkboard? Well, he, he made a very appropriate use of the chalkboard because he was using it to, to produce a final summary of, of the lesson. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that is, is a very good use of the chalkboard. And, and I personally believe that although the chalkboard is one of the oldest, perhaps the oldest, 
um, teaching aid, it, it's still one of the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from the look of things, if you look at the entire lesson, it means that the, that the teacher had a detailed lesson plan where yes. there were activities that were mainly designed for the learners yes. and also the duration because he knew exactly how much time they had to spend mm -hmm. on each and every activity. Mm -hmm. And that is good planning. Yes. And do you find the, 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 the teachers in our um, townships and in our schools doing detailed plans? Well, I think you'll find the good teachers mm -hmm. are good teachers because they plan well. In my experience, there's a direct correlation between good teacher, good results, um, and uh, planning. I think we, uh, planning is absolutely essential. We don't have, we have somewhat of a resistance to planning. And my, in my experience, teachers have often said that, look, we've got so much work, we've such a huge workload, mm -hmm. and one needs to take cognizance of that. But I think uh, preparation is not negotiable. Mm. Yes. Some of, yeah, some yes. of them would actually say, I've Absolutely. been teaching this lesson for the last 20 years, oh, so absolutely. there's no need for me to do some yeah. preparation or planning. Mm. Uh, gentlemen, that's all we have for today, and thank you very much for your participation. Uh, viewers, that is the end of our show. Thank you. Mm.